this is my third year back, actually, speaking, and it really proves that either y'all are really curious about the dark side of ortho, or you're very desperate for speakers. Either way, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. And that was after, yeah. That was after uh, we worked all day to try to ship it out the door. So, anyway, this is uh, the Ortho Memorial. I'm going to try to keep it fun and exciting. I'm going to go over the check in of uh, what it looks like coming in from the doctor. So, this is my desktop. This is an actual shot of my desktop of the, the patients that have come in from a doctor that has submitted them through EZRX to my lab. And of course, I've blocked out the patient names the best I could. Uh, but you can see date submitted and the date they need it and check in, view, and edit. And of course, the, the practice name and the office, and it keeps up with different offices. Uh, one lab I worked at, they had a doctor that had five different offices and five different doctors and those doctors would switch offices on a weekly basis and they use like numbered colored dots on prescriptions to tell you where to deliver it and who to bill and it took a, a whole different separate person to bill out that but this see I'm future proofing my lab because I saw that coming this will take care of all that you can have different doctors who to bill and it and it does it automatically so cases come in. This is a box of models that came in, nicely packed. No broken teeth in this one. Uh, and as you can see, we put them in case pans with numbers. Everybody use case pans here. There are some ortho labs that just lay out the models on a table and they write these instructions on it. I can't. I don't know how they do it. Anyway, uh, so it's good y'all know what case pans are. So this side. It, the left side is the EZRX with physical model submission. So this is, they filled it out on EZRX, submitted it, and then shipped me the model. Now the cool thing about that is I knew the models were coming before the models got there. So if I saw they just submitted 14 appliances, we can then block out in our schedule, oh, we need to do these. These are the due, we already know the due date. We know when they're coming because we can track them within the software. And so it's kind of like a warning. Uh, to get these models now uh, over here is the classic way a script and models easier X you get intermittent both ways so so at the menu bar you have workflow and you have check-in and written check-in so check-in are the ones the doctors send you digitally and written check-in are the classic paper script model uh, so the check-in the doctor submitted is for digital models and plaster models. You see how they're starting, they're going parallel. They didn't say, we're going to go all digital and screw the rest of you that do analog. It's like, hey, we got a method for both ways. You can, you can provide for your doctors either way. I have doctors that don't use the EZRX at all. They have no idea I use it and I earn them in to EZRX just like a regular software. So then a written check-in, paper prescription, and you can also scan those paper prescriptions and put them into EZRX in that patient's file. So you can actually pull that patient up, click a, a file link, and you can actually see the paper script. So you can see they're just trying to help out as much as possible. So um, this is the, that home screen. I've uh, clipped out a certain area of it. And you, if, once you click check in, so this is the doctor provided. The green means it's digital. There's STL files attached to it. And the white means there's plaster models coming in the mail. And so when you click on it to check it in, the first thing you're going to see is a sample of the prescription. So it's kind of like sitting at the desk and you're entering in the case using the script and you're seeing the models there. So you see uh, uh, the prescription. And of course, my favorite is this is the iTero integration. So when the doctors are filling out the EZRX prescription, they put the iTero ID and EZRX goes into my Align Tech pulls all those scans and puts them in that script. Uh, so I don't have to sign up for my line tech or three shape or any of those services because uh, EZRX goes and gets all the files for me. Uh, so you can see, you know, occlusal, the different views. Notice the brackets that's going to come in a little bit. You can see a preview of the scan. 
And then, of course, you put the bin number in so that you can search in. When you search for prescriptions, you can search for bin number, last name, doctor. It, it's, it's a whole database. And then, of course, date needed. This is uh, what the doctor asked for. Now, um, once you click on shipped, so if I go back, you'll see ship date. Uh, so date needed, they asked for the 7th, you know, and you need to ship it on the 6th, whatever y'all's time schedule is to get it out. Okay, we're here. So once you click on that little area, you get a nice little calendar. I like it. I'm visual. I like to see the, the calendar and you can choose the date and it's a week um, and it, you get the next. Now, the cool thing is in EasyRx, you can actually say how many days in the lab you need and you can say which are your business days, which days are you off and it will calculate when the doctors enter in and try to choose a due date that you're off like July 4th or Christmas Day, it won't let them do it. Or if they do it within, say, I have a five business day turnaround. If they try to ask for a shipping date in four business days, it alerts them, won't let them do it. They actually have to call me for me to override it. So that's my, one of my favorite parts. And uh, it actually calculates. You can set in there, even with they're off on Fridays, you can say they're off on Fridays, and they can't choose that as a delivery date. It will block them out from choosing a Friday as a delivery date. And so it calculates all that. And then you can say it takes two days to ship to them, plus it's a Friday, and so it extends out the due date that they can choose and suggest a good due date. Now, as you're entering in this in and you're filling out the ship date, it's listing all the prescriptions that you've already entered in and the ship date you have. So you can actually choose like there's a bunch going out on the 4th there's a bunch going out on the 8th you're like okay they want it on the 9th okay it's going to go out with all these 7th so you can actually start batch shipping right as you're entering the case so we're back to there's the ship date so 3d printed models so obviously we need to charge for printing uh, which is here and you come up with these in your own so i have two horseshoes horseshoe upper and lower two full pallet models because with ortho uh, you need the full pallet for RPEs and, and uh, stuff like that. Usually the horseshoes, horseshoes are for uh, Essex. Um, and then of course you got all these options. It, they can ask for digital study models, they can ask for study models. Uh, you see that bracket carving? I didn't cut this out, I didn't snap this out very good, but I see they have brackets. I can say bracket carving upper, bracket carving lower, and it automatically charges their account. Not doesn't charge their account. Bills them. Start. It starts whatever you choose here. So that 3D printed model. When I choose upper and lower horseshoe, it automatically adds $22 to their invoice. And then when I do bracket carving, already automatically adds it. So it starts building your bill as you go. Uh, model duplication. Uh, bands so ortho we do a lot of bands and you can I have a price for each of these so one is practice is sending model with impression with the bands in it um, and all the, the different options that you can get bands from a doctor and then you can choose the band type you can have different prices for that and the number of bands in the arch um, and I skipped this right now but if it's a repair or replace you can actually put the ID of the past in there or if it's a break, they can actually go to the old script in EasyRx and request repair, and it just copies over all the data, and they choose a new due date, and uh, you don't have to re-enter re in. Now, the billing item, you come up with this. So they're trying to work with every lab in each lab's workflow. So, you know, you put your rush in there, you put your bracket carving, shipping, 3D Anything you think of that you need an extra bill to bill the doctor for, you can put it in there. And then you check in prescription. Okay, so written check-in, so that the left side here. Same thing, but you choose the practice, and you can choose the doctor. You can choose ship to, to office, uh, bill to office, so all those you enter in, or the doctor enters in, and they say, uh, deliver on this date, but to this office. And the great thing is when you go to check them out, it will invoice out and give you where to ship each batch and give you a list. 
so you don't have to accidentally ship uh, plants to the wrong office and vice versa. And of course, they type the name in. Uh, that was that part. And then check in and view RX, and then there's also check in and edit. There's two different paths. The view is the digital version of the paper. So you can actually have a paperless lab if you want. You just have your laptop, your iPad, or whatever, and you get all the information on here. You get that same progress bar that the doctors get. Uh, you get, of course, all the information, all the shipping. You get a parts list. Uh, you get a view of the, you can download the PDF if you still want paper, uh, and then edit RX. So this is the edit screen. This little circle right here, you can actually move it, and it will stretch out that labial bow over different teeth. Uh, you can move the Adams clasp up and down. I uh, know this is probably, I don't know, if it's a C clasp, y'all know C clasp. Yeah, so if it's a C clasp, you can move it up and down and around. Uh, so you have the name up here, and you can actually click on the name and see all the scripts associated. So if it's a patient that keeps coming back and coming back and coming back, um, it, you can see how many scripts you've made for them and what you made, what was the last color you made it, what was the shade of the Pontic you made last time. Uh, you can pull up all that info right there. And then you can actually see this in labs. You can turn this off. But as you build this thing, as you add a... So here's a parts library. I'll get to that in a second. As you drag over an Adams class, it, it puts that on the invoice. And then as you drag over the acrylic, it puts it on the invoice. So and you see a parts list. Labial bow, you can choose wire gauge. Now they do have crown and bridge parts and dentures, so you can drag over a PFM crown, and then they can say what shade it is and how much uh, thickness, Bob, I don't know. So there's view. Oh, that's what you click on. That's the, uh, the EZRX number. So that's the number of that script. And it's unique to this patient. Nobody else in all of ER, EZRX's database has that number. So it's very HIPAA compliant. All their servers are HIPAA compliant, so you don't have to worry about that. And then like, no more emailing STL files and stuff like that. And then you have your toolbar here that you use to build this out. And of course, the view of it and the part options. I just went over all that. This is the best thing, templates. I don't know, with ortho, most doctors about 90% of the time get the same thing over and over and over again. So they don't have to build it part by part. They can build it once, save it as a template, and they just click add and it pops up. And it's just there. And right there is where you choose the paintbrushes, where you choose the, the colors of the acrylic. And then the parts library, that I just spun around real quick. Um, that's a genius thing. They've, they've tried to incorporate every single ortho part out there. It's almost as bad as like different types of implants and abutments. There's just tons and they're all called different things, but they're the same thing. Uh, but I think EZRX is doing a good job of keeping it all the same, uh, making everybody use the same terminology. So you print the, the EZRX, this is how it comes out. You get a barcode you can scan, which is fun. So when it, you go to check out, you can scan everything, your whole list, and it starts checking them out. Done. Complete it, complete it, complete it. Starts building an invoice for you to bill the doctor with. And then give you shipping. Uh, but I've come to find out that doesn't fit very good in the, the case pan because you fold it in half and then you, you're looking like this at the case pan and it starts hurting your neck. So. Uh, actually, Sarah came up with this. Uh, if you print it in landscape and scale it down to about 70%, 75%, you can actually get it to fold in half and it fits in your case pan. So it, it, just that, that digital version, all that info is right there, the same info. Now, the classic workflow continues from there. We all kind of know what that is. You, you have a plaster model and you make a retainer on it. So, but the digital workflow starts from there. So this is where it kind of starts veering off. Um, it takes a detour.